Do I got the money? I only have 100k left. Holy crap. Okay, level 4. Yup, and then for meals... Heads. Unique weapons shaped like a meal's head. Uh, okay. <laughs> cool. Ooh, look at that, look at that, uh, effect. Insanity. And there we go! No, I don't care about my white sword! Again, I gotta go save first, because I don't trust anything happening here. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. Now we can read all the weapon stories, too. It's gonna be sweet. We gotta get out of here first, though, because I know... I know machines are gonna come out of here. Ha oh. Save? Ah. Oh. Why did we do all of that? Now that we have... All weapons maxed out. Ah! Something there. That's the... That's the shopping mall. Okay. So let's go to that place in a sec. It's finally time for us to read all the weapon stories. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna remember if I read all of them or not, but uh, we'll just go down one by one and see what it's like. Oops. Faith. Yeah, this was the poet who, uh, who couldn't get a job as a poet. He was very sad, and then he married a kind woman, and it seemed like everything was going very well. Or so the poet wrote before he put down his pen, swallowed the paper whole, and prayed that the next life might turn out so well. Oh. He then took faith, already stained with the blood of another, and plunged it deep into his chest. I guess he's happy that he has a nice family and all that, but the thing that he really wants is to be good at writing poems and touch people's hearts that way. But unfortunately, that wasn't something he was able to do. Hmm. Oh my god. Um, yeah, we've read this one, but did we read the last one? So please don't go anywhere, alright, dad? Don't leave your Yona all alone, okay? Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Beastbane. Once upon a time, there were three princesses. The middle princess wasn't very bright, but was renowned by all as a great beauty. Once she came of age, she was married off to the king of a neighboring nation. The neighboring king adored his new wife and treasured her looks above all else. He gave the middle princess six new dresses and eight fresh flowers every day and his love caused her beauty to shine all the more. The middle princess? Oh, like the... an age? The middle princess did all she could to remain beautiful for a king, but she knew time would eventually catch up with her, as it did for all. So after much hard thought, she developed a cunning plan. The middle princess had herself stuffed and mounted so she could remain beautiful for all time. The king wept joyful tears at the sight, but alas, two years later, war broke out, and her body was crushed under the rubble of the castle. Self-taxidermy? Oh my god. The more messed up part is that the king wept joyful tears at the taxidermy. <laughs> oh my. Why are all these stories so messed up? They're always messed up. Beast Bane. Phoenix Dagger. Uh, we read up until the third one here. Time passed, and eventually she got her revenge. Years later, when she was an old woman, the songbird appeared anew. What of your vow? it asked. But she did not understand, and come to think of it, what became of her beloved dagger? That night, bandits broke into her house, assaulted her daughter, and murdered her grandchild. Oh my god. The songbird then reappeared with a single question. How long will your hatred burn this time? Yeah, this was the person who wanted revenge, but then they forgot. Like, they vowed to remember forever, but they forgot. Oh my god. Ancient Overlord One day, a young girl's village was sacked by bandits. To protect her family, she took up a dagger her father had found in the mountains and killed one of them, an act that shocked her family. But the bandits fled, never to return. Five years passed, then ten, then twenty. Though the family she protected began to grow old, the girl never aged. Eventually, the other villagers began to shun her. With no one to turn to, she finally left her village and began to wander the earth, visiting many strange lands in the process. As the years passed, her skill and fame as a master sword fighter grew to legend. 
Eternal life, a powerful weapon, and boundless experience, she used these talents to become queen of a nation. And yet, there was emptiness in her life, for she still desired the kindness her family denied her after that fateful day. After becoming queen, she must have had all that she wanted, material-wise, but, you know, maybe sometimes a human, all a human is looking for is the, the human connection, the human touch. Hmm. Eternal life. Won't her people be like, whoa, how come our queen never ages? <laughs> They'd be kind of scared about that, I guess. Yes, I think we read this one in full. Command pulled the plug on our project. The weapon will go into official operation with the core still sealed. Hold on. So this sword has a core in it. And it's sealed. Because if they tried to remove the protection, people were dying. Oh. Type 3 sword. The craftsman's weapons were neither flashy nor attractive, but they never once failed in battle. This reliability afforded him a never-ending stream of loyal clients. Yet something nagged at the craftsman. Though he'd forged many a weapon, he'd only tested them on pigs and cows. He wondered what it might feel like to use them on another human being. Ugh. The craftsman took a sword to a battlefield and slashed the corpses, disappointed at how easily the sword slid through them. It wasn't satisfying at all. He wanted to really feel like he was ripping through flesh. The craftsman modified a sword in search of that feeling, not thinking at all of the pain it would cause until one night, a bandit broke into his home, snatched the weapon up, and showed him exactly how effective it was. Is this weapon serrated? That would make it hurt a lot more. Type 3 sword. We can go look at it right now. Oh, it is serrated. Jesus. Ah. Yeah, dated Yorha blade trusted by android veterans. Not the latest model, but still better than the latest model. Type 3 is better than 4.0 for some reason. Hmm. Okay. Back here. Virtuous contract. Yes, we read this one. Cruel Oath. Yes, the Town of Salem one. <laughs> Yorha Issue Blade. Yup. Machine Sword. The more old records I read, the more fascinated I become by the species known as humans. We machines must do all we can to preserve these precious artifacts and continue to record their contents. I see from these records how important predation and reproduction were to human survival, and yet they viewed such acts as sinful. I wonder why. What is predation? Like being a predator? Is that sinful? I guess so. I found a famous human book today, but after reading it ten times, it still makes no sense to me. What possible attraction could there be to such a thing? Eureka! It seems the answer was right in front of me all along. I am simply incapable of comprehending anything about humanity or the world in general. Ah! How wonderful it is to live in a world swaddled in mystery! <laughs> well, it, it's good to be curious, and I think, I think all of you robots are plenty human enough. Engine Blade? Oh, we read the first one. A king sits alone in his vast, vast office, drowning in affairs of the state. All he wants is to see his family and hug his son, but he cannot, for he for his, every waking moment must be spent in service of the people. What's his name again? Regis? One day, while eating dinner, the king asks his son what he most desires in the world. He hopes he will say that he wants them to spend more time together, but instead the boy simply points at a sword hanging on the wall. Ouch. The ancient sword is considered the sign that one is ready to rule. Someday, the king chuckles. His son faintly smiles back at him. All he really wanted was for his father to read him a bedtime story. Aww. Aww. Well, too bad, because your dad dies later. Cypress stick. I think we've seen this one. Yes, all of them. Large swords? Iron will. The sword's blade. It's the same picture as the other one. Dulled by years of idleness. Was, as its name implied, a mere iron hunk. Its blood-drenched youth was a little more than a series of rusted memories which grated against its pock-marked steel. Who could wield this hunk of iron now that its edge was gone? Who might love it 
when all it could do was bash dully against the foe instead of cutting through flesh and bone? Who would devote themselves to such insanity? The sword sighed softly, pleased to finally be at rest. But before it could peacefully crumble into dust, a group of power-hungry fools took it up and denied its reverie anew. Red rust was the weapon's tears. The blood, fat and muscle it tore through was proof of its curse. Now, let it hew bone once more. Let it ravish flesh. Let it do all this and more as atonement for its sins. A sword having a will of its own. Iron will. Just want to see what it looks like. Oh, wow, it's huge. No, oh, I didn't want to equip it. The blade is dull. Its power comes from mass alone. Does it smell of iron or is that human blood? <laughs> Fang of the Twins. Beast Lord. Once upon a time, there were three princesses. The eldest one was thought to be... Yes, we read this. The eldest princess was thought by all to be the most brilliant woman in the kingdom, and she soon sat upon the throne of her homeland as their queen. I feel like we've had at least three stories with three princesses, so are they talking about each one? The new queen raised a mighty army. To afford the endeavor, she taxed her people, and in turn, they were given jobs in the new factories created to support the war effort. People worked, money flowed, as the army grew strong, the demand for factories grew with it, and then the cycle repeated, more work, more money, more work, more money. The queen's plan proceeded, just as she had envisioned it. To further strengthen the kingdom, we were converted to machines, oh my god, to enhance our output in factories and the military. Our queen in turn became the control system that rules us to this day. <sighs> Maybe a tad too brilliant. Phoenix Sword. Did we do this one? Partially? The songbird was nursed by a hawk back to health, but then, as promised, the hawk eventually returned, but with a human in tow. Well done, said the human. These feathers will sell for a great price at the market. Then he slew the songbird in one blow and plucked its carcass clean. Jesus Christ, man. Type 4 O blade. Huh. I've come up with an incredible idea, something no one has ever done before. I'm gonna start testing it out first thing in the morning. The boss turned down my idea of infusing metallic a alloys with magical elements. Thrice damned fool. Doesn't he see how much money we can make from this? Things aren't going well, my hair is falling out. I think it's a stress. I've gotta find a way to make this project succeed, and soon. I looked over the data, but couldn't work out the problem. I'm not giving up though, with Takata dead. Oh, it's a different person. It's up to me. I'm the only one who can carry on his work. Oh. Well, I guess they finished it. Type 3 Blade. The great sword was known for the intense pain it inflicted upon its victims. This is what drove the man to carry it despite its weight, for he knew it would make others fear him, and thus he could avoid needless conflict. Oh. The man's reputation spread through the village, despite never having drawn the blade. Don't make him use that horrid weapon! The villagers whispered. The man smiled at this, for he knew that fear was the best path to peace. Soon, the man had craftsmen forge a host of similar weapons. He gave them all to the other villagers. What? In the hope it would force people to solve conflicts with words instead of violence. And his plan worked for a while. Keeping all sides in check is simple when no one uses their power. But once that seal is broken, the end is nigh. Thus did the peaceful village transform itself into a living hell over the space of a single night. Good intentions, but needed better ideas. Virtuous Treaty. Yes? Cruel Blood Oath. I'll never forget the time we met. I knew ours was a love that would last for eternity. But even when by his side, his feelings were a mystery. It was painful to not know what he was thinking. So painful. When I was close, I hurt him, yet being distant hurt him more. I finally found my place in life, a place where I am as close as possible, yet eternally distant. Ooh, what does that mean? Can we get a hint? 
cruel blood oath. It's no frills design gives it an aura of serious weaponry. We have a cruel oath. Oh yeah, that's cruel oath. Where's the blood oath? Here. It's a little different. It's a black katana. Stained jet black. I don't really see it. With the blood of years of conflict. Hmm. Machine X. Human fight! Why? Why humans love? Why do humans band together? You! Why are you alive? It's a machine X. <laughs> Curiosity. Oh, what, what the hell is this one? Oh my god. Every time I read the last paragraph, I'm like, what the hell? Okay. Legends tell of a mighty warrior who had no equal in battle. Granted immortality by Phoenix, he wandered from war to war, forever searching for ways to prove his strength. Eventually, the man's immortal body proved too much for his spirit, and he ran himself through with his own spear again and again. But each time he did, the wound closed over itself, leaving not even a scar. He leapt from cliffs, threw himself into raging seas, and lit himself aflame, but nothing worked. Then one day, he slipped mercifully into unconsciousness, and awoke centuries later to a songbird on his chest. You have atoned for your sins, said the bird. If you wish me to free you from your solitary existence, I will gladly do so. The man wept tears of joy and whispered thanks to the gods before suddenly stomping the bird to death. Ah, uh, alright. That's ah. Uh... I feel like a lot of these stories come in groups. The phoenix weapons, the beast weapons, they all seem to be... They have the same characters in them. The songbird, the phoenix. Beast curse. Yeah, see this is about the youngest princess, and we read about the middle princess and the oldest princess. The youngest princess was widely regarded as the ugliest woman in all of the land, but her heart was gentle, honest, and pure. Hoping to aid others in need, the youngest princess would travel to the fields to offer succor to peasants, but they would reject her kindness with cruel words. The youngest princess knew her looks were driving people away, yet she kept donating her life to the service of the others, figuring that the fault lied in her own lack of devotion. Day after day, this continued for years without end. The youngest princess died alone, curled in the back of a damp, wet alley. She was so ugly that no one had the courage to give her a proper burial. Instead, she rotted where she lay, turning ever uglier until she faded into the earth. What? That's so sad. Gosh, these judgmental people. So the middle one was really pretty, and the oldest one was really smart, but everybody ended up shittily anyway, so whatever. I had a dream. A dream about the day we met. He was small. Oh, I think we read this one. He was insignificant. He was weak. Yet he hated the world just as I did. I decided to aid him, and he did the same for me. Thus was our friendship born. It wasn't perfect, of course. Mistakes were made along the way. Still, we remained friends. The blue wind that caresses these grasslands has a pleasing scent. I bring my cheek to his and he twitches, almost as if tickled. Then I spread my wings and let him ride me into the skies above. It must be a dragon. Spear of the Usurper Two princes... The son of the queen consort was clever of mind but weak of flesh. The son of the king's second wife was dim-witted, yet charming, and quite gifted in the art of war. Which prince would succeed the throne when news came down that the king had died in battle? The two men each declared themselves the next true king, rallying the people to take the side of one or the other. So is it the smart person or the charming person? In the midst of this coronation battle, a third man appeared claiming to be a prince, bright, capable, and brave. He dispatched the two foolish brothers and went on to become a wise and just king beloved by all. Decades later, the king announced on his deathbed that he wasn't royalty at all, but in fact was the son of a commoner. Upon hearing this revelation, the people stormed the castle and hung their beloved ruler from the rafters. Even though he was such a good king, all the people cared about is if he was royalty or not. Jesus, man. Oh my god. 
Yeah, this is the same as the other one. The other broadcast, everybody just left. The unadorned lance pierced her foes with machine-like accuracy. The grind of metal on bone in tandem with the pained screams of her victims created sweet music in the mercenary girl's ears. Day after day, she returned to the battlefield to compose more music. Here, a giant of a man, fat rippling from his sides. There, a slimmer gentleman whose bones would surely produce a sweeter sound. Ah, who to stab first? Jesus. The girl fought for an age, stabbing uncountable foes in an effort to find the ideal scream. That sonorous bone-grinding sound, yet perfection eluded her, no matter how hard she tried. Would she ever find what she sought? Suddenly, she turned to find a fine-looking hunk of meat at her side. Stabbing it produced a scream so pure, she couldn't help but smile. She continued to smile as she stabbed, no longer able to recall that the hunk was her own child. Okay, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Oh, virtuous dignity. The elegant white spear was crafted by a tyrant as a gift for his wife, whose parents he had killed years earlier. She slipped it under the bed they shared, then later used it to run him through 30 times. The spear's second owner was a courageous bandit-fighting mayor. In her later years, her strength faded, until one night, a pack of young thugs surrounded her and took, that all, took all that she had, including her life. The third owner was a greedy merchant who lived to swindle customers. Soon, she found herself shunned and penniless, so decided to hang herself. The unused spear rested in a corner of her home as a decoration. The fourth owner was a meek young boy who wanted to aid his sickly younger sister. He gave all to this cause, including his very existence and that of all else in the world. Oh, this must be the replicant near. Hmm. Cruel arrogance. Oh, and this is the father at the end. The dark, hideous lance was crafted by a beautiful female artisan. As people far and wide praised its design, the artisan's apprentice grew jealous and slew her, the lance itself soon vanishing into the mists of time. The lance's second owner was a puppeteer who crafted a clockwork doll capable of doing nearly anything. When he put the lance in the doll's hand, she lashed out and pierced the puppeteer's skull right between the eyes. The third owner was an infant prince who was gifted the lance by the queen regent. She died soon thereafter, and on the night of her funeral, the lance vanished from the infant's room, leaving behind only a tiny corpse in the crib. Ah. The fourth owner was a simple, honest man who wanted to aid his sickly daughter. He gave all to this cause, including his very existence and that of all else in the world. Machine Spear my name is Plato 1728. I am a failure of a machine. I was designed for combat, but I can't use weapons. Everyone makes fun of me, and my life is horrible. <laughs> Are you the caterpillar machine with no arms? I am a dumb machine. I got lost during battle and ended up in some kind of factory. I found a whole pile of dolls discarded there. They share the same fate I do. I am a foolish machine. Today, I had to fight at the factory. All of the dolls got completely destroyed, crushed by my friends and foes who can do nothing but fight, fight, fight. I activated my cannon and shot everyone there. I'm not sure why I did that. All I know is that I decided to fight because I'm just a stupid, broken machine. Oh, well, you're fighting. I think that's what machines do. So you're ahead of the curve here. <laughs> okay, that's it for spears. Combat bracers? Wait, did I do spears? Yes. Combat bracers. Angels folly. Once, there was a demon who held an affinity for angels. He dreamed of serving alongside them and their god, yet cursed the impossibility of it all. Then one day, he came to earth, bringing himself a step closer to heaven. An angel was sent to slay the demon. When the evil one saw his foe, he burst into tears and revealed his plan. Please, the demon begged, you must give me a set of white wings for my very own. The angel agreed to trade a set of white wings for the head of another demon. What? Overjoyed, the demon killed one of his own and plucked the head right off its still warm body. Oh, well, the angel got one demon killed. The angel then led the demon to heaven, where he underwent centuries of the cruelest tortures imaginable. Finally, 
The pain was so great that he lost consciousness, at which point his dark wings turned the promised shade of white. Uh, well... Looks like everything worked out fine. Did he want to become an angel, though? I thought he just wanted to serve with the angels. Whatever. <laughs> Demons cry. Once, there was a gentle angel who came to Earth to provide salvation for those in need. Whether it was curing illnesses, offering blessings, or cheering the sad, he was always there when needed. The angel, however, provided aid to sinners and non-believers as well, an act which was strictly forbidden. Each time he did so, a single white feather would fall away from his glorious wings. One day, the angel came across a young girl with an illness that pained her deeply, but he could do nothing to help the child, for all his feathers had long since fallen off. The angel cursed both himself and the cruelty of the world. The resulting hatred stained his body and his wings, turning them both black as night. Then crying, then, crying tears of blood, he brought his hands to the girl's neck. Wow. So this one is a demon becoming an angel, and this one is an angel becoming a demon. Two sides of the same coin, huh? Type 3 Fists the man wailed an inhuman scream as he brought down his fist on his opponent's skull. He brought it down again and again and again, until the victim was nothing more than a splatter of blood and bits. The man had a beautiful wife that drove everyone wild with jealousy. They lived a simple, happy life, yet the man always strove to keep his wife safe above all else. One night, the man came home to find a stranger in his bed. Oh my god. His wife told him that he had forced himself on her. At which point, the husband flew into a rage and vowed to exact revenge. On the wife or the stranger? The man brought a weapon from a craftsman famed for forging instruments of pain, then used it to punish his wife. I knew it. I'm getting a hang of these stories now. And um, it's also because it reminded me of um, To Kill a Mockingbird, which had a vaguely similar situation. For he could not abide that she failed to protect her virtue. His revenge was complete. This man is an asshat. Virtuous grief. I see you in my sleep. Restless sleep. My heart flies to pieces each time I wake. I burn to see you in the real world. I hunt for the woman who pines for you. The scream pleases me. Your body and heart shall be mine. Your heart, I long for it. Yet it does not return my love in kind. All you care for is your cold dead wife. So I must at least take your body. Your head is mine beautiful head. <laughs> the eyes that scorned me are so lovely now. Hate me if you like, begrudge me all. You are still mine forever. Jesus. You know, these stories all have some really, really not well-adjusted people. <laughs> I take up the sword and battle for you. My heart knows not fear, instead burning with a love strong and pure. I swing my sword for you, Spattering blood across my sleeve, I smile as the chaos continues. I brandish my sword for you. Victims uncountable, victims beyond measure. Their dying wails become the song of my sleep. I cry out, give me your head. I capture you as you flee and take it. I do all this for you, for you, for you. Who are you? These two are creepy. Machine heads. I lack parts. I am useless. My existence is unnecessary. Oh, I tried. I tried so hard, mommy. I was gonna make fun of this, and then the last line. <sighs> I confirmed that the machine life forms released by the aliens have reconstructed. September 2nd, 12422. 12422? 12,422? I've started to see units with gravity controlling capabilities again as well. Emil's journal? October 15th of the same year. I was spawned about a week ago, so I don't have clear recollections of anything before that. Say, I wonder where the original disappeared to all those millennia ago. Oh yeah, we never we never found out about this. The one that we beat was just some random other Emil. I assume, because there's so many, that can't have been the original. December 14th. I confirm that the 25th one born after me has stopped his biological activity. Dead? Although we're technically immortal, since we can respawn indefinitely and all, we're still not exempt from death. Oh. That's... 
news to me. Next year, January 19th. Our memories are only copies, so they're pretty vague. That android wearing black. Oh? I have a feeling I've met her before. She had a complicated look on her face, but I can't remember anything. Oh, 12... Wait, 12,000? I thought we were at 11,000. I don't know what's the quick way to see, like, what date we're on right now, but I guess that must have been 2B. Why does she look complicated? Because she knows that she has to kill 9S, maybe? Hmm. Well, that was a lot of reading. That was basically another freaking forest of myth. <laughs> Even though we already had 100% on the novels. God. Okay, well, we know that we have something at the shopping mall, so I think it's probably a good idea for us to go there right now, near the tower. What's something that will only happen if I have all weapons here? Because this showed up after I upgraded all my weapons to max. What does that mean, though? Oh. Are you still angry? Hello. No song. That's a rare sight. Oh! Hey ya! Oh. Okay. I don't actually need anything anymore. And I bought way too much of the materials. Look at that. Jesus. That's why I'm so poor now. Wow. You've sure gotten strong. I doubt you'll be needing my help anymore. What do you mean? Um, nothing. Don't worry about it. Take care now. Emil sure is acting kind of weird. Pod. Pursuit marker placed on map. Target is heading toward the desert. <laughs> nice work. Let's go find him. Oh, it's a quest! Emil's determination. What? Uh-oh. What the hell's happening now? This must be the last quest then, other than the reconnaissance squad. Something is wrong with Emil. Follow him to the desert. Alright. Okay! Alright, we're going really far out in the desert, and I think I have an idea of where we're going. Is it where Emil's heads are? The ones in the desert? I don't know. God. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Oh, I think I have my chipset equipped right now that doesn't have a mini-map. Which makes walking around really kind of annoying, but... It's alright. Yeah. Emil's head. Is he waiting for me here, or...? What's going on? Hello? Oh, is there something there? Something glowing there? Are these... Emil? Yeah. Getting closer. Oh? Hey, what are you doing? Emil! Watch out. They're still alive. Uh-oh. What is that? <gasps> oh my What's god! What's happening? Alert. Magical weapons from the old world detected. Magical elements have a high probability of penetrating all defense systems. Proposal. Evade. I know that! Oh, there's multiple level 99 heads here. I don't. Oh. Alert. Elemental output of magical weapons has increased. I don't know how much more of this I can take. Should I try hacking it? Bowser, what happened to my clones? Years of multiplying, years of fighting in wars. Their sense of self just deteriorated. I need to settle things with them on my own. 
Stop it! You have to stand down! Hmm. This battle seems to be not as strong as the other one though, because the heads are kind of just aimless. Let me try hacking it, because they really seem to want me to hack it. Oh lord. Get the cylinder! Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Ah! Whoa! Whoa! That's... <laughs> when I said you weren't that strong, that wasn't a complaint to get you to become stronger. It's fine. Oh. Gosh. I gotta get the one over there. No experience. Did that even do anything? I don't know. Uh, okay, well, everything is level 99, but like I said, it just seems like we're not doing too badly today. It's not like the other one with the constant little Emil heads trying to get at me. So, that's okay. And it doesn't seem like they're all trying to get me either. Just one of them is getting me at a time. Poor Emil, though. Like, we're feeling bad about us being, you know, of machine origins because of our whole black box thing. But it's like, Emil has been going through all of this for all of eternity, and he has no way out. Well, earlier the weapon story mentioned that they're immortal, but they still die. So, maybe if he doesn't respawn himself then it'll be okay. Then he'll just leave and not exist. But then he can't defend the world anymore. Okay, why is this one not dying? I got it to the end already, but it's still not dying. Oh. God damn it. Do I need to get all of the heads down to a sliver of hell? I don't know. Oh. What? It's just not dying. What is going on? Woohoo! Guess I'll focus on another head? This head is pretty much out of hell. Yeah, so, okay. Focusing on the other ones, then. All I gotta do is keep my laser on it. Oh! Without getting killed myself. I don't know why they seem so insistent on me hacking it, though. They keep telling me that I should hack it? I mean, I will, but why? What? Oh. When it came out of the ground, it kind of looked like Hegel. But a uh, Emil version of it. Jeez. I honestly can't tell if hacking is even doing anything. I'm hoping I'm doing something, but there's so many heads everywhere. Oh my lord. Come on. The one head that I got down to low health, it doesn't seem to be around here anymore. So I'm hoping that means that they are going down one by one. How many are here right now? One in front of me and then like five in the back. Jeez, that's a lot of heads! In one way, I'm glad that this is not as hard as the other one. Because <laughs> the other one really took me a long time, so I'm really glad for that. But at the same time, it's like I'm killing Emil. What am I doing? Emil was always nice to me. He sold me so many materials. He's the reason why I'm even here to begin with. 
Without him, I wouldn't have been able to upgrade all the weapons. Okay, if I kill all these Emil clones, I'm not doing a bad thing, am I? Even the one on the cart said that he wanted to put these out of their misery, so I think, you know, maybe I'm doing something good here. Is this battle going anywhere? What? What? What do you want from me? I don't. But even so, all of this is wrong. No matter how hard or how painful, they never gave up. They kept fighting because they believed they could overcome someday. Isn't that right, Kaine? Even uh. if it's pointless, you still have to do it. Because this is the world my friend tried to save. Oh. These heads. Oh, you're a self destruct. Can I stop you? The Emils caused their fusion reactors to go out of control, turning the planet into a dead chunk of rock, tumbling through the vast vacuum of an uncaring universe. Heady battle. Hmm. Poor Emil, though. Like, there really is nothing that compares to this pain. 9S and 2B and A2, they might all be sad and whatnot, but... You haven't been alive for tens of thousands of years. Alone at that. Actually, now that I think about it, he might have made some other robot friends, but then... Eventually, they all died, too. Oh my god. Might not be a half bad thing that he self-destructed then, huh? <laughs> but that was probably a joke ending, so we can probably get a different one if we don't let him self-destruct. Because this is the world my friend tried to save! I think this is it for me. I can't believe I remembered something so important. Right at the end. Emil. I was running from the memories of losing those close to me. It was so hard. So painful. At the end, I did a lot of bad things to you, 9S. But now I get to see them again. Really soon. Hold on, Emil. We'll repair you and get you back to normal. Oh. Hey, there you are. I'm so glad I got to see you all again. Emil. <gasps> hmm. Emil? Like, throughout Automaton? Of course, he's been very helpful with the 
crafting materials, and he's just been generally wandering around. But in the grand scheme of the whole android versus machine war, he was just kind of like a side person, not really involved in any of that stuff. Okay, wait, hang on. Back up a second. He's not a side person because he was defending humanity the whole time. But I mean, like within the main story quests and stuff, he wasn't really a part of it. But then if you come from Gestalt and then you realize that he's been doing the shit for tens of thousands of years, doing it for so long that you forgot why you were doing it in the first place, but you keep doing it because you know that it's important somehow. Oh my god, poor boy. Emil might be physically, not even physically, tens of thousands of years old, but inside he's still like what? He's like 12, 13? It's not something for a 12 or 13 year old to go through, really. God damn. Ah, uh, we're back to the... back to here. Okay, so I think that must have been the last of what I wanted to get done before we move on story-wise. And uh, it's a little bit weird here too, because I always thought that Stark game would take us somewhere new. But um, I tried using it, and it just takes me back to where I last used Chapter Select. So it seems like what I need to do to continue on is to go back to the tower and maybe try... Oh! Yeah, this is the problem here. I can't... I've only gotten one of them. Nine as his final moments. But what about... What about A2? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we'll be doing that when we come back, because I am... I'm really tired right now. I spent a lot of time trying to max out all my weapons and catching a meal on his rare materials route and defeating a meal. Oh, it's, uh, it's taken a toll on me a little bit, so I'm gonna rest up for a little bit, and when we come back, we will see what A2's final moments are like. Oh, I was also told that if I hack in the final battle, there might be something interesting, so maybe I should go back to 9S, especially because at the end, in the novel section, they let us choose whether we want to stay or go with Adam and Eve. So maybe I could hack and then try staying and see if it changes anything. Anyway, we'll do all that when we come back. Very, very soon.